Welcome back and this is part five of our matrix setting series and I'm Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada. I have been using matrix and training matrix for over 20 years. I started off with GemVision in 1999 when we first developed matrix. It took us a solid year to develop it before we could actually take it to market and I'm pretty proud of what we've accomplished over those years. You know, we just wanted to build a software that was cool. And it's pretty remarkable to see so many companies worldwide using Matrix. So let's talk about channel setting. He was actually one of our first builders in Matrix 1. So you can see here we've got this earring with these princess cuts. So I've got a little example down here. Let's go into the side viewport. Okay, so if we looked at a cross section of a channel, this is what you would see. Now, you've got to give enough clearance over here cuz let's just let's just rotate this. Okay. So if we were a setter and you can actually pre-notch the walls, which some setters are happy about. Maybe don't go 100%, maybe just do a nice little scribe line, which is not 100%, but enough of a guideline for the setter to know where to take their setting burr and just open it up a little bit more. But technically, this is how the setter is gonna set a stone that's channel set. They're gonna come in at this angle and so if I just grab the rotate and click on this and then they're going to sort of snap it down in place. So that's why all this metal has to be cleared out. Now you can see here the culet. So I'm assuming that we're going to use gem cutters to cut out a little hole if we were in the looking down viewport, which I, I haven't made this solid and oops. My curve is technically not planar, but we would have a hole here so that the culet would not be damaged when they are setting this stone. So that's why when you use matrix channel builder, so if we went ahead and selected the stones, tap F6, go back into channel builder. Now let's just change this to our cap ends to square there we go and then let's go to the side viewport so that we can see through here the default for the cutter is quite deep here's at 100 percent so it's almost cutting it right down to the culet the other thing as well is that the default does choose this rounded bottom now for casting purposes cast especially with those resins casters are happier or you'll get a better cast if there's no 90 degree angles for casting. So here they've chosen this round bottom. If we click on the library, I like to use this one. Again, it's rounded corners, but you know, either one, I haven't had any complaints at it. The bottom of this is going to be covered anyways. So if you want to take that extra time to change it to this soft square, you can. Okay. The other thing with channel builder is that it's going to build the channel 90% of the width of your gemstone. Okay. So that means 5% and 5% are going to be embedded into that wall. And that should be enough for setting this stone securely because you don't want this channel too narrow, then the stones aren't going to fit. The setter is going to have some issues with that. So let's just press enter and I can select this cutter and we can go ahead and delete it. The other thing too about channel setting is that you have to have enough metal on either side of the gemstone. So let's go to the through finger viewport and I've got about one millimeter. If we go into measure and then go to our horizontal dimension, and I'm gonna go from here to here. Yeah, I'm a little bit wider than one millimeter. I'm 1.1 millimeter. So this is plenty enough metal for the setter to do a nice job 
with channel settings. Some people don't want the walls this wide. I have made them at 0.5. You don't want to go any narrower than 0.5. You want your setter to do a nice job, especially if the wall starts to look a little bit wobbly because you've made it too narrow. Another thing that I've seen in the past, and I don't do it, but some of my customers, I'm not sure if you've ever used metal piece. So if you select the gemstones, tap F6, and come down to metal piece. This was developed many years ago, and it basically puts a frame around any gemstones that you have selected. So if we come over here to metal piece, so the top row, this is for a single line of gemstone. So technically it's open-ended. They do not come around and make a closed loop. Okay, so if you've got an open-ended row of gemstones, you would want to use this. If it was a closed loop, you'd want to switch over here. This is putting a frame around it. This, if you just want to put metal underneath this single row, I'll just go ahead and click on it. There you go. But let's just, let's just stick with this one. Up at the top here, this is what the top of this metal piece is going to look like. So if you click in this library, and again, you can add your own. I have never done it. I've been happy with these shapes that we have here. So some choose this one with a little bit of a dome. And I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And then you've got these different modes, which allows you to customize this a little better. Here is gem offset which I don't want to move it in or out. I'm just going to leave it where it is. The other one is profile offset. So if you want to raise and lower it, and then this other one right here, see if I got the right angle. This allows the ends. Okay. So this allows the ends to be pulled away. All right. Okay. It's called level position. So now if we go to level dimension, this is where I want to be. So here is profile width and just skinny it up. So this is what I've seen with some of my students that they will give a little bit of extra metal because the setter is going to put pressure right down here on this edge. So once the stones are tight, then they can come along and clean this up. So again, if you want to do this, this does give your setters just some extra metal so that they'll have a cleaner job so that they're not really damaging the top of this channel too much. Because again, they're going to be hammering on this edge here and then they're going to be filing down. So if you give them just a little bit of extra metal, that could be helpful. So again, that's metal piece. And I had to do a custom head one time. Well, I'll talk about that later. But metal piece saved my butt. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and press enter. Okay, and then I can go ahead and delete that. And while we're here, I should delete this so that we're out of the way. So that's the most important things with Channel Builder is that you've got enough metal here and that the channel is deep enough so that when the setter goes ahead to set those stones, it's going to clear it. And you can see here that I have come in here with my Azure cutters and got sort of a reverse taper here, which looks really nice. Again, if you want to learn how to build all these samples, they are in my primary, intermediate, and advanced classes. So you're welcome to reach out. And since we're talking about earrings, here's a post that I built in Matrix. They're very easy to build. And if you go into render and go to the props library, here's where you're going to find your butterfly, even though I've been told that it's not called a butterfly. Earring back. So here's your earring back. But in Canada, we call them butterflies. And I think in the UK, you do as well. So this is where you can find this guy. And 
You could just take a curve and extrude it if you want to just to visualize a post because technically no one's going to print these and cast these. You're just going to order them. But the other thing too is let's just put this on orange and hide it. To be a, a nice CAD operator, you may want to make a little recessed hole here so that the jeweler can solder this in perfectly. So if we go into the side viewport, you don't want to be too deep. Some, some people, the recommendation is 0.3 millimeters in. Let's go to measure, let's go to horizontal. I'm 0.16, so technically we could just push this in a little farther and see how this is lined up with our ISO curve here. And if we go into the through finger viewport before you Boolean, just make sure everything's centered. That looks good. Okay, so if we now go to cutters, Boolean builder, we'll select our cutter, we'll keep our cutter, we're going to select our object, throw it in the objects box, and again if you get the two check marks, life is good, go ahead hit do Boolean, and then if I hide orange, you can see here there's a nice little divot there, and <laughs> because I filleted these edges, oh my gosh, you gotta love Rhino and its history, it went ahead and filleted that edge there for me, cool. Okay, so technically these are findings, and again, if you hit the arrow down and you wanted to save them in the master folder, you could put the post and butterfly in a parts library. But what I've done is I've made my own findings library here, and I keep this in here at all times, anytime I make a pair of earrings and I wanna render it. So that's Channel Builder. Make sure that you have enough metal and and you have enough depth so that your gemstones will be able to clear it and then don't forget to actually make some little windows or little cutouts or little azures underneath so again the setter will have an easy time of it if i turn off the gemstones here you, you can see here's my little scribe lines for the setter and these will print they will cast properly they do come out quite nice so you're helping your setter be able to get those stones set at the same height but again you may have some gemstones that the crown is a little taller than the rest of the gemstones so that's why it's important not to make that scribe too deep so that the setter does have the option to go in there and raise or lower it Okay, so that's it for channel setting. My name is Shelley Letwin. I'm from GV Design Canada. This was our part five of our series of matrix settings. I have hoped you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. And if this is the first video, please go back and watch one to four. Hopefully you'll find some tips and tricks in there that will help you become a better CAD modeler because I just want to make really nice jewelry for my customer. That's what makes me happy. I just want to make pretty jewelry for the world. And I hope you do too. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and I hope I see you for part six.